In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you my top five tips to secure your home network and my top five tips to secure your gaming PCs. Let's get into it. Hey, welcome to Zach's Tech Turf. In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how to protect yourself, your gaming PC, and your home network from online threats. And if you're new here and you wanna see other videos just like this one, then hit that subscribe button down below and also that notification bell, that way you never miss an episode. But before we get into it, let's quickly talk about the sponsor of today's video, which will actually protect you from online threats as well. Today's video is brought to you by privacy.com. Privacy.com allows you to create virtual credit cards to use online instead of your real ones, which allow you to keep your actual bank information safe and hidden on the internet. More details towards the end of the video and make sure you keep watching to learn how you can get $5 for free that you can use for any online purchase. All right, so to sort of structure this video, I broke this video up into two parts. The first part is my top five tips to secure your home network in general. And then the next part is my top five tips to secure any workstation in your house or specifically your gaming PCs. Securing our home networks is more important than ever as cybersecurity threats are all around us here in 2019. I'm sure you've heard of all the major vulnerabilities over the last few years, such as the WannaCry ransomware, Spectre, and Tesla Crypt. But what a lot of people don't know is that one in 10 computers on this planet are infected by a virus every single month. The tips that I'm about to share with you aren't some end-all, be-all, magical solution that'll keep you 100% secure. That solution doesn't exist yet, but rather every single tip is just a layer to add to your security posture, and that's all that you can really do. Do keep in mind that I am a sysadmin and cybersecurity professional out in the real world, out Outside of YouTube, so I do have a pretty strong foundation of cybersecurity concepts, but none of the ones that I'm about to tell you today are anything super in depth, and you can actually use all 10 of these tips today if you really wanted to. With all that being said, the first tip for the network protection side of things is to change your router credentials from the default, but if you're about to start rolling your eyes because this is an easy one, make sure you also change that username for your router and not just the password. Now, I'm not talking about your Wi Fi settings here, we'll get into those in just a bit, but I'm actually talking about your router's web interface credentials. You can usually get to this by going to 192.168.1.1 or 10.0.0.1. If you only change your password, then you're giving hackers half of the information that they need. So make sure you change both your username and your password to something secure. The next network security tip, like I briefly just mentioned, is to have strong Wi-Fi settings. And I'm not just talking about a strong Wi-Fi password. Having a password stronger than your phone number or your home address will certainly keep your neighbors from stealing your Wi-Fi, but it's also important to do things like hiding your your SSID that way, when somebody tries to connect to a Wi-Fi network, they won't see your SSID on their list of available networks, and you'll have to type it in manually, but this kind of hides it, which is a really good start. Another good Wi-Fi setting is to disable both the guest network unless you actually need it, and definitely disable any sharing network such as what Comcast Xfinity does. Xfinity actually creates a separate network using your router so that any Xfinity member can connect to it for some free Wi-Fi. Now that network will be segregated from your home network, so those users won't have access to your internal network, but either way, they're still using the bandwidth that you're paying for. And I don't know if other companies do this, but Comcast Xfinity, that's pretty shady if you ask me. Moving on, my third network security tip is to create some sort of offline data backup to prevent against ransomware. Ransomware is a type of malware that encrypts all of your files and then the attackers demand Bitcoin to unlock it and ransomware can quickly spread from your PC to even your server or network attached storage. So it's a good idea to keep this offline. An offline data backup can consist of an external USB B drive that you unplug, or if you have a Synology NAS like I do, you can actually configure it to disconnect from your network whenever it's not actively backing up, and this is a pretty good idea to do. Next up, we have firmware updates, and I'm sure that everyone already knows about this, but I don't think it's a shocker to actually say this. A lot of you probably aren't actually doing this. Everyone probably already knows that it's a good idea to keep your firmware updated, but sometimes it's a pain and sometimes we forget, but it's a really important step. I know that Synology and both Netgear, which is what I used to use, give some type of alert whenever there's a new firmware via email or something like that. But yeah, it's just a really good idea to always keep your firmware updated. New malware is being discovered every single day for any type of network device, whether that's a router, a switch, or a modem. And a lot of these updates will protect you against new malware or vulnerabilities. So make sure you stay current with those updates. And finally, my fifth and final tip for securing your home network is to buy a router that actually has useful security features more than the one that your ISP provides you. And I decided to go with the Synology RT2600 AC, thanks to Synology for sending that over. But yeah, you 
gotta get one with useful security features. One of the features that I really like on my Synology is an application called Threat Prevention. Threat Prevention defends against cybersecurity attacks because the app inspects every incoming and outgoing packet and can automatically deny malicious packets. This type of app is perfect for cybersecurity nerds like myself because I can monitor all of our network traffic, compare it to the signature baseline, set up all sorts of alerts, and it just adds yet another security layer from outside the network into my home network. Another feature that I like about my Synology router is called Safe Access, and this is what you use for parental controls, but you can really use this to control any user's access. Safe Access allows me to set up a user for my son Antonio. Yeah, I know he's only two months old, but I'm using him as an example here. And here I can actually whitelist specific websites that he's allowed access to, so I don't have to worry about him accidentally going to a malicious website. Having a good router like my Synology allows you to monitor all of the traffic in real time. You can also see what devices are currently connected and where their data is actually going to. Just get a router that's better than the one that the ISP provides you for like 10 bucks a month. All right, so now it's time to transition gears and it's time to talk about how to secure your gaming PC or any single workstation in your house. Do you remember that these are just some basic tips and all of these are just layers and no end all be all solution. Before moving on, another big thanks to privacy.com for sponsoring today's video. I've actually started using privacy.com myself and I'm very happy with the service because I no longer have to put my actual credit card information on the internet right now and it makes me feel safe using the virtual card. This is especially important for us PC gamers that like to buy some game or operating system codes using some shady websites. The way it works is you connect a funding account to fuel your virtual cards and then you can either create a single credit card to use wherever you want or you can create individual cards that can only be used on Amazon, iTunes, or wherever. These cards ensure that they can only be used on these individual websites in case they do get compromised and you can also set spending limits. Privacy.com recently introduced premium plans. On the pro plan you can get 1% cash back on every purchase and up to 36 cards per month and over on the team's plan you can get access to a dedicated account manager and up to 60 cards per month. Privacy.com also has a Chrome extension which helps fill out your credit card information quickly. It's PCI DSS compliant which means it's held to the same security standards as your bank and it's even secure with military grade encryption. Head on over to privacy.com slash ctt to create a free account and they'll even give you five dollars to spend on your first purchase. Yep that's five dollars for free heading over to privacy.com slash ZTT. The first tip up is easy and that's not to use an admin account all day every day. That original user account that you created when you set up Windows is an admin account. So that means anytime you run an executable file, you're giving your that file permission to run with elevated privileges. And yet you should just not be on an admin account all day. The thing to do is to create a separate non-admin account and use that for your every day-to-day -day tasks. And then if you ever need admin credentials, simply type in the admin account credentials and now you'll know exactly when something needs elevated privileges. Next up is an antivirus, and I'm not gonna dive too deeply into this one because we already know that we should all have an antivirus. I personally use the paid version of Bitdefender, but I have no affiliation with them whatsoever. I would highly recommend using a paid antivirus or anti-malware just in general, because the free ones are always offering you like 10 times a day to upgrade to their premium service, or they're not actually giving you the features that you really need. So just use a paid anti-malware on your workstations. Moving on, my third tip is to use a VPN or virtual private network whenever you're doing something on the internet that's confidential such as finances. By using a VPN you're encrypting all of your internet traffic to and from one of your VPN provider's servers so that way a hacker can't see what you're doing and this is very important because it's actually not terribly hard to steal credentials from just typing them in on a website if a hacker is monitoring that traffic. I'm currently using NordVPN. I do have an affiliate with them so if you go to nordvpn.com slash Zach you will save some money but both my wife and I use the NordVPN every single time we connect to anything financial such as our bank or our investing websites, this is very important. Next up, we get to a very boring tip and that's OS and software updating. Yes, as I'm sure you're aware, just like firmware updates, it's also very important to keep your operating system and software up to date. Like I said, with the firmware updating, new malware and vulnerabilities are being discovered every single day. And the way that developers combat this is by pushing out updates. So it's important to keep both your OS and software up to date. Now, to be clear, I'm not saying that you have to update update your Windows build every single time there's an update. We all know how frustrating that can be, but it's very important to at least apply the security patches that way you know you're secure. And finally, my 10th tip is something that
that I do every single day, both on my home network and at work, and that's to scan every single thing that I download from the internet. I personally use a website called Virus Total. It's been around for probably over a decade at this point, and it allows you to upload your files, and then the platform scans it with like 50 different virus scanners to determine if it's a threat. There's also a community score so you can see what other people think about the file, and it's nice to see that as well. This is very important to do anytime you download an executable file, such as a software installation or definitely any email attachment from somebody you don't know. Even if you're on a website that you think you trust, it's always good to take those few extra seconds to scan that executable before you run it. Well, there you have it. That wraps up my top 10 ways to secure both your home network and your workstation or PC. Like I said in the beginning, these are 10 great steps that you can implement today. And I highly suggest you do that because all of these are pretty easy and it'll take your cybersecurity defense game to the next level. Also, big thanks to Synology for sending over this router. Having all these features on here is actually what inspired me to create this video, and I'll link their router down in the video description for anyone that's interested in that. Well, that wraps up my top five ways to secure your home network and top five ways to secure your gaming PCs. As always, drop a comment down below about what you thought of these tips or what other tips you would have others do. After that, feel free to head on over to one of these two videos if you haven't seen them yet, and definitely hit that subscribe button because coming up next, the Dell Optiplex is making a comeback. You don't want to miss that video.